Hello, welcome to Earth Engine tutorial number 100. In this video, I'm going to show you how to convert uh, a cloud optimized GeoTIFF or any raster image to a NumPy array. And then you can do computation. After you finish that, uh, you can convert the NumPy array back to a cloud optimized GeoTIFF. And so this is quite common uh, because if you have some data exported from Google Earth Engine and then you do some analysis using your computer eventually you need to save the result back as a raster images so i'm going to show you how to do that step by step first let's go to uh, gmap uh, website to download the normal examples and so click tutorials uh, scroll down find number 100 and uh, converting numpy array to uh, cod so cloud optimized geotiff and then click upper right corner the download button to download this one to your computer then you can e open it using uh, JupyterLab so here um, this is quite a simple example so I'm going to show you just two steps and before you do that uh, make sure that you um, install the latest version of GMAP and also um, Ryo CogGeo so those two packages are needed um, so uh, Ryo CogGeo is not a required dependency of gmap so make sure that you install that uh, separately and also update gmap to the latest version because uh, this some of the functions that i'm going to show you only available in the latest version okay so first let's import the library and then so for the cloud optimized GeoTIFF, we're going to use these simple examples from uh div map so on hosted on github and so what we can do is actually download this one to our computer and we're going to use the function called download from URL and just uh, provide a an URL and then uh, output file name it will be able to download the file to your computer okay so it's going to download my to my download directory uh, let me just refresh so you should be able to see this uh, cloud optimized GeoTIFF and um, GMAP can actually show the image but you can also use other uh, desktop GS to open it if you want so for example I can open QGS and then simply just drag the file uh, to QGS and then uh, you need to right click zoom to layer so take a look this is just a simple uh, Sentinel 2 imagery and uh, just a small subset so you can double click to open the um, to see the metadata information so you can see here uh, four bands okay RGB and near infrared you can also see the spatial resolution so roughly uh, 9 meters okay and minimize that so once we have downloaded the imagery and one thing you can do is to convert the image to numpy so uh, very frequently if you are trying to do some analysis with the imagery to do any computation most likely you will need to convert it to a numpy array so just a simple function image to numpy and what you need is just passing the, the image right the, uh, the input file path so what we are doing here in COP basically it's just the cog.tif so this is just the file pass and then it's going to be converted to a numpy array and take a look so once it's the numpy array then you can uh, for example take a look at the uh, the shape so uh, the first one is how many bands and um, um, this would be how many rows and this would be how many columns right so uh, height and width so band height and width so sometimes also called channel how many channels uh, you have in here uh, you should also be able to directly um, just type ARR so just the variable you will be able to show you for example number of the uh, values but it might be very difficult because it's a nested and so this is the dimension so shape you will be able to see for this is essentially a four band imagery right RGB and near infrared assume that okay we want to compute the NDVI so the normalized difference vegetation index so how can we do that so you need to know the equation right so you'll be uh, near infrared minus the red band divided near infrared past the red band so be, again rgb and near infrared right so band zero um is uh, red band and band three is the near infrared band so near infrared minus red divided by near infrared plus red and then you get the ndvi so uh, just execute and the result will be just one single band right so it'll be just one and it'll be the same as this one here how many um rows and how many columns how many rows and how many columns take a look it's the same size 
and so this will be the NDVI and after that um, this is a simple example but you can do a lot more uh, complicated analysis and eventually you'll be just as a um, numpy arrays and then you need to convert the numpy array back to uh, a cloud optimized GOT so just a simple function numpy to cot and the save tab to take a look at the, the helper documentation so the first one will be the numpy array is the one that we just computed earlier so it'll be the ndvi numpy array and the second parameter will be the output where do you want to save the output and you can also specify the bounding box or the profile uh, most of the time you just need to use the profile so think about here the profile will just use the template so uh, whatever you use it's going to use the same projection uh, same bounding box so you can basically inherit the information without having to specify um, the, the basically it's just a dictionary so if you want you can take a look at this one it can just be a simple string so with the input file pass basically the output file information is the same as the input except that uh, it's different number of bands but everything else pretty much remain the same or you can just uh, use a dictionary so this one using the raster IO package but uh, just simply specify the same as this one so we uh, because we use the um, this input for example here let me remove this one because we use this one here while well, download the file and right now this is the input we use to do NDVI analysis and what we want is the after you we want to save the NDVI we're just going to use the same um, information so same projection same uh, uh, spatial resolution right and so make sure that you specify this one and execute take a look at on the left side refresh now you should have this NDVI uh, calculated so it's very quick um, and again uh, if you want you can also open this one using uh, QGS or so zoom this one now you have this right so if you want you can also uh, use the identifier upper right corner uh, the lower right corner here you should be able to see uh, the values right different bank combination in, uh, and the code for the current layer you can also use um, um, top layer All right so you will be able to see the uh, NDVI values right so white color uh, bright color means uh, positive NDVI so it's uh, vegetation and then this will be negative so it's lower so lows are basically not uh, vegetation so take a look and besides using desktop you can also directly use a uh, uh, gmap to load the raster so just create an interactive map and then you can use the add raster function so the first one here is the original sentinel 2 imagery and you can also specify what kind of bank combination you want to use and what's the layer name similarly you can also the output code here this one basically is the ndvi image right so after you do the calculation you can specify a palette also a palette can only be specified for a single band imagery uh, because the input is a multi-band you need to use the band parameter and so the single band you can specify a palette or basically just color map and you can also specify the layer name that's it so execute take a look and behind the scene it's just going to read the imagery and then convert that to a Thai layer using uh, the local Thai server uh, package and take a look so this is what we have and so uh, this one what you're showing here on top is the NDVI uh, layer but you can turn the layer off, off. you can also take a look at the uh, original imagery used to compute the NDVI right so uh, this is water so it will be negative very uh, uh, um, NDVI values and you see the red color those are, are all uh, representing vegetation so you have a positive NDVI so this is how you can load the imagery directly onto the map using uh, GMAP besides that um, I'm showing you here that you can actually get the pixel value because just like what we did earlier here using uh, QGS right so if I click my mouse on a low right corner here you should be able to see the value right and if you can change the layer for example i can move just to um color layer right so this one right now has four bands so you also be able to see the value right? if i turn this one off so you can see the value you can do the same thing here in gmap so upper right corner and then click this one here lower left corner this button uh, get caught and stack pixel value so if you click this one oops, 
uh, it will I have has a pop up dialog. So from here, you should be able to get the pixel value. But you need to select the data uh, the data layer first, right? So for example, uh, I just want to select the NDVI, right? So this is the NDVI layer, and then just place your cursor on the map and click. You'll be able to see, for example, when I click my mouse, it adds a marker to the map. And also here, you should be able to see the value, right? One that means is the um, the NDVI is just one one layer, right? So if you click my mouse. Take a look, negative, negative, positive, right? So the, you can continue to add marker, right? If you zoom out a little bit, it's going to uh, make it into a marker cluster. So this is how you can actually um, get the pixel values. Uh, you can switch the layer. For example, I want to see the original color inflate. If you, you can switch and you can also click the reset. Uh, it's going to remove all of them. And this, for example, uh, uncheck the NDVI. So now we have only this one. And again, click your mouse on the map. You'll be able to see uh, one, two, three, four, right? Four bands, right? Near, uh, RGB and near infrared. So if I click my mouse on the red color, you should expect to see the near infrared has a high value because it has high reflectance in the near infrared band, right? So this is how you can get the pixel value, get the pixel value. If you want, you can also specify a label, but uh, we'll do that in a future um, a video. But for now, you can just continue to check the pixel value, whatever. If you just want the visible band, for example, I just want uh, whatever band is being shown here, it will be just the um, near infrared red band and green band, right? So you will just show you three bands, one, two, four, if you just want uh, three bands. So after you're done, you can um, click the download button. So if you download, it's going to download all um, the pixels locations. So this will be very useful if you need to collect training samples for supervised classification because uh, you need to get a pixel value and you need to specify a label so this is where you can do that but again we saw that in the future video but just showing you after you click the download button uh, you'll be able to download this one to a computer and then you'll be able to open so you get all the uh, leg long and also the label right so here we have four spectral bands right and for so each, each point uh, then we click we have the latitude we have the longitude and we also have the pixel values right so uh, bank one two four and the location so if you specify a label you will also get the label um so this is how you can uh, collect the training sample but uh it's kind of very general it can be used to check pixel value of any cloud optimized GOT or or, or, or uh, stack item um i'll show you in another video but for now uh, this is what we have here um, you can switch the data layer. If you don't need the marker, you can uncheck this one and then you won't see the marker, right? So, uh, so a couple options allow you to um, change. If you don't need it, you can just check this one. It's going to be minimized. If you click again, it's going to uh, dock in here. So it, it will show, always um, appear in here. Once you are done, just click close. Uh, you will close the dialog box. Okay, so this is uh, what we have for this video. I hope to see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.